Um, so so this, is, this is the Fortis ASSI portal. Um, I will go into these managed endpoints. Uh, you'll see I'm actually here registered as IT man director is, is my, my endpoint here. And uh, if I were to get it connected, the reason I have these IP addresses up here is you would see that it would change. In fact, um, if I refresh this here, it probably will, uh, well, there it is. Um, what happens is when you, connect your, when you connect to the VPN, your IP address changes and you access those private resources. When you connect to the ZTNA component, right? Uh, and we'll, we'll, we're gonna talk about those posture tags. When you connect to the ZTNA component, you have the choice of going cloud native or direct. So that, that's that two-pronged approach. The universal ZTNA granular best practice for zero trust doesn't have to be cloud native. Then there's the secure private access piece uh, actually is cloud, you know, has to go there because you're, you're fulfilling, you know, fulfilling the routing. When we, when we talk about those tags and that, and as Satish was talking about, the dynamic posture assessment, what we do before we create those tags, and this is, like I said, this is the SASE portal, we authorize those access proxies. Now I call that an access proxy, it's an application gateway, it's a FortiGate. And that FortiGate, to your point, can be an SD-WAN FortiGate along with an access proxy, or you could dedicate it as an access proxy, really, really whatever you want. So we would configure that and identify the, the uh, device, and then we would create some tags, and you see here, I've got a director endpoint here, and I'm saying a, it's a basically a definition that says, and this is very simple, it just says, look, this endpoint is gonna get the director tag if it has this file called director.txt, right? And what I love about this, and what I love about this demo is that's the simplicity that SASE should be. SASE, when you're using a SASE framework, you should get to go home early every day. Right? You can come in late because everything is easier. You're not worrying about onboarding users and things like that. This is part of that sim simplicity. And basically, if my posture changes on this endpoint, if I go and turn the firewall off, right, then this endpoint is gonna lose the Windows firewall on tag, and all of my firewall policies are related to that. So if the posture of my endpoint changes, then the nature of the access that I have changes. Make sense? So when we look at this, so we, we talked about those tags. We talked about then uh, the first piece was assigning an, an access proxy. Uh, the second piece was creating the tags. We talked about whether or not you want to go cloud native or not for your access proxy. So here's where we actually exempt the access proxy IP address so that the traffic goes directly to it and not through the Fortis SASE cloud. And then we create our ZTNA rules which are essentially, in this case, what we're saying, and, and we're able to do it broadly, uh, you notice that we're using an FQDN, so we're not just using IP addresses, and what we're saying is that the destination to that domain, and we're, and we're pegging that to SSH, right? So this is an example of a ZTNA rule using SSH, right? This is that granular access versus, you could do the same thing if you had the tagging that was different, right? And, and do it more broadly. So what the way I really like to explain that, and then I'll move on and show you a couple things. Think about pre-pandemic and who was a VPN user. I've been working from home since 2004. I know what a VPN is, right? But overnight, we had this influx, which created a lot of turbulence and a lot of configurations and networks that weren't specified to support 500 users where they, you know, a week before they only had 50. So that's one thing. So volume, you know, caused this problem. What happened though is those vulnerabilities and the threat surface expanded because now that fix that was put in at 3 a.m. to make one of the devs be able to finish their project, right? Now that vulnerability has been spread across because you had this influx of, of VPN users, right? So that's why we've seen or constantly seen, you know, these, you know, some recent breaches I think are related to those number of remote users, more people clicking on things and things like that. Post pandemic, that's where it's tricky. We have some enterprises that, you know, were already remotely, so they probably stayed remote, working remote. We had some that everybody was in the office and they give you a choice, right? And the difference again between our approach to this with remote access is we give you the flexibility to do agent with our client, 
We give you the flexibility to do secure web gateway to gain access to both uh, private resources and the internet, right? Um, so we, we give you all that flexibility and choice. And we, and we give you pieces of hardware if you're like this guy over here that doesn't need to worry about clients or things like that. He just wants to open his laptop and work, right? And that's kind of where I think if we close this off, we have VIPs or uh, when I used to teach school, PCs, right? Privileged characters, teachers, children. You want to make sure you're nice to the teachers, children, the PCs. Those people are the ones that get this kind of access because they're special. They work remotely. They need direct access. They, you don't want them to have a, a certificate issue or something like that. So really, the universal, universal Z, uh, SASE theme, right, is, is that concept or single vendor SASE theme is that we support those multiple types of connections. Questions? Keep moving. Um, Hopefully you'll see the synergy that we that you saw in the Forda Manager. Similarly, this is that cloud version, so the menu is a little bit different, but it's the same concept as Satish had me call call out earlier. Um, in fact, I think I went to application control in the Forda Manager. You'll actually see basically the same thing, the same actions, right? So that speaks to that Forda OS, completely different uh, solution here, right? Forda Sassy is an amalgamation of of our pro products that we represent in a portal. But again, we provide this uh, security, the security profiles just as you would if you were administering uh, FortiGate in your house, right? Very, very simple there. We tie that and, to- And maybe very clear, all of this, what we're referring to applies not just to clear traffic, but also to the encrypted traffic. If you go to the bottom of the page yep. and click on that customize, sure. we'll see that we support deep SSL inspection not just at the header level. So what this means is you have a standard man in the middle proxy where we can terminate the connection, do the complete inspection of the payload, and then build a connection to the actual end server where the customer user is trying to go to. And then when we talk about this, I think usually two things come up. Hey, do you have the customization to kind of exempt certain traffic, financial healthcare? Yes, absolutely. And they do have the capability to do exempt certain endpoints, which I do, do not want to really encrypt the traffic on. We have that level of customization available. So all of the things what we are talking about can be applied for your encrypted traffic as well. And we also automate the certificate process. That's why I flipped back That's here. Right. So uh, once I register this device, and we can do that from an automated standpoint, or I use this with just an invitation code, um, it automatically, if it's part of that group in the portal, is going to be, uh, it, my client is going to make a request for certificate and then download from Forda Sassy what it needs. Same thing would be for the secure web gateway scenario, but that would be something you would have to distribute from a certificate standpoint. You would, you would get that uh, basically just to, just to tie that piece off. Um, the, the SWIG configuration is, oops, there we go, um, is very straightforward. Uh, we have a, a pack, you know, a hosted pack file that you would use. You could modify that pack and where you host it. And again, it's that standard, you know, very similar use case um, that you would do. And it, it all comes back down to policy. So your agent based users have a policy set, your uh, secure web gateway users have a policy set. And if you remember the policy I showed you about um, the director endpoint tag, this is really another, another distinct difference in how we approach security, which is we set the profiles, we decide what we want to put or what we want to inspect, and then when everything comes back to a policy, a firewall policy essentially, which this should look familiar to you. But what's interesting and what I love about this, again, we are steering traffic based on the, what this director endpoint does. So if this director endpoint doesn't have that director tag, they're not able to browse to the sites that they want to get to. And as an example, uh, these endpoints here are, are generating traffic for us. They're, they're automated as, as part of the demo. But you can see here, this is again, that same visibility that we provide. If I wanna dig down even further into a specific application and say, hey, who's been going to YouTube? Because I'm not sure that's allowed for some users, right? So again, this is, this is firewall 101, but we see well, YouTube seems to be good. We can see what that rule is. And then I can actually drill down and find out who's been using YouTube. 
and who's allowed. So we can actually see, oh, I guess directors and employees are allowed. You know, those are things they're allowed to do versus maybe some of those other things that they're not. So again, we extend that visibility and capability into the interface, right? And then we also provide the things that you would expect in terms of forward traffic logs, right? If you, if you wanna do those basic things uh, in terms of being absolutely knowing what's going on when and where. We do the same thing, full robust capability, capability to filter on specifics if you want to in, in that regard. Same thing for security events. Okay, so those security profiles that you saw, um, those are tied to these logs that are generated again by, uh, by those users. Okay, and here we see, just to give you an example, this contractor too, clearly a lot of the contractors are not allowed to go to this specific website, so they were blocked, right? And that all happened because they had the contractor endpoint tag, right? They wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, and then to, to walk through that, we you know, catalog those events. And may, some of you may be wondering, well, what about external access? Obviously, we, we support that uh, as well, okay? One last thing, I wanna get into the, the last piece, I, looking at the clock. This is the other side of that use case. We talked about our zero trust network access, the two-pronged approach, right? This is that second piece. This is that broad access that I was telling about. Go back and just, when we look at this, think of a, a customer's network. They've got an SD-WAN infrastructure in place with Fortinet. Essentially, you come in and as Satish said, we can support multiple hubs, so multiple SD-WAN networks, right, that you can attach, which is very convenient if you're distributed and you have specific uh, regions with specific types of users and you wanna add certain networks. And it's, it's just that simple. Um, and then these, these, health, these routes that we learn, so these are the BGP routes that we, would, we are learning from that SD-WAN network. And this is what provides the access, because I said everything comes back down to firewall policy, which is we have this broken down uh, to internet access policies, but then we also have private access policies. So we're controlling what those endpoints can do. Uh, and if I, I jump into one of here, one of these, the, you know, this is the rule for DNS that we have to go to the hub as an example, very similar to the remote access one. I'm curious, uh, do you have any customers automating this like is there like there's a lot of pointy clicky here if you've got mm -hmm. a whole bunch of uh <laughs> you know, a whole bunch of policies to create is there you know is there api access do you of you know uh, how do you support people wanting to do this as you know maybe in in code format um everything is code um mm -hmm. you know do you have that capability we do have that capability it's actually published uh on our fndn uh, site, our Fortinet Developer Network site. It is something that we are actively adding modules to. If you were to look at it right now, uh, you would say, well, Michael, there's really not a lot there. But uh, the truth is, there's just not a lot that we're exposing, right? So obviously, we are a fully automated, orchestrated solution. This portal that you see is exactly a representation, a representation of that, even though I'm, I'm doing the pointing and the clicking. Uh, the people that are running the solution are not pointing and clicking. They're, is they're issuing commands and code from a, a monitoring standpoint, from a management standpoint, and then from a usability standpoint, to your point, I think that's interesting uh, and obviously where we're going to grow that. But we have that API capability today. And because it's that single OS, we're, already, we're not having to rewrite things. We're just pulling from components that we have and kind of making them fit into our portal, if that makes sense. Okay, and then as far as pulling information out into a, you know, a seam system and other logging systems, do you uh, rec like do you have solutions for that? Do you recommend people just use yours, or is there a way to pull it out for <laughs> organizations that are already ingesting other types of information and want to want to consolidate that? Sure. So big thing with us, we and our interoperability and our open e ecosystem and our fabric partners. But aside from that, specifically with Fortisassi today, we allow you to kind of send those logs outbound to, a, you know, an a collection server or an aggregation, a data lake or something like that. You could send it to something like a Splunk or we have our own SIM product as well. 
um, you know, which you would do externally. If, if you're talking about the internal components, we haven't had a lot of, you know, internal access from the outside in from an API standpoint. We, we haven't had a lot of requests for that, but I'm going to make a note of that today and see where that is. That's not something that we're actively doing, you know, actively looking at. I see three minutes. I want to talk about deployment models. You had mentioned the device, the hardware device that someone pulled. And connecting that directly to the Ford Assassin solution. How do you help customers decide what's the right solution? Because my initial thought was, okay, a hardware device at home, that would be connecting to the, the SD-WAN mm -hmm. solution rather than directly to SASE. So if somebody's connecting to Ford Assassin, they get that level of protection. And then you also mentioned that the Ford Assassin solution is directly tied into the SD-WAN solution. So if somebody connects that device to Ford Assassi, are they essentially also connected to their SD-WAN yes. inherently? Yes, you just connected all the dots. Okay. Yep, so basically, and that goes back to that on-net, off-net concept. So from a deployment, if you're, an, if you're an agent, right, and I'm connected, I can make your experience identical because you would be always off-net. I would just treat you always off-net. And that concept of uh, needing to, if I go to the office, you can choose if you want me to traverse your SD-WAN for some things and go cloud native for others because you know okay. we can do that. But to your point on the remote side, it, it's kind of the same thing. We would just, wherever you connect with that agent, you're going to get that experience, right? And then I, I flipped here because I keep remembering things I didn't do, um, which is this is the representation of that of this thin edge in this Fortis Assy instance, which I spun yesterday, went home last night after I met some of you and, and uh, configured this, um, and now it's showing up, right? So from that standpoint, this actually is a, a ZTP process, okay? And I would just, you know, do the prerequisites, which is the license and an entitlement. And this is about really the only live demo that we're doing right now, so play <laughs> this. Um, but it it points you to uh, to Fortis ETP, right? And and uh, that's where uh, that configuration push would go, and that's how we would automate. You know, that's how the device is automated and connected. And again, it's it's I would close with because I lo I love that question because I talk about solution validation all the time, and. If you don't do a good job of understanding what problem you're trying to solve, you will fail, right? So with SASE frameworks, there's two things to consider. It's not an ad hoc security solution. It's, it's a platform. So when you, when you look at SASE frameworks, you need to think about the idea of having a staging environment to work in and then a production environment, which is very new. And even if you're a smaller company, that's still relevant as a place to do those testings and, and do those changes because SASE frameworks are dynamic and constantly changing.